Father, we thank you. We love you. We bless you. We glorify your holy name. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray with living and trusting. Amen. Look for a neighbor. Give them a nudge on your way down. Tell them good to see you. And look imply. Tell them don't remove your mask. Everybody, your mask will be up to your nose. Then you may be seated. Now, today we get to start a new series. Three most important things in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, the first most important person in your life is the Holy Spirit. When I talk about the Holy Spirit, most of you think I'm talking about a wind, I'm talking about a fire, I'm talking about a white dove. Now those are just types to represent the Holy Spirit. But that's not the Holy Spirit. And so, Pastor, who is the Holy Spirit? John 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Can we read together one more time? And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. So Jesus knew that the Holy Spirit is neither wind, nor fire, nor dove. He knew the Holy Spirit was beyond that. So he taught and said, that I'll pray the Father in heaven, who will give you the Holy Spirit or another helper that he may abide with you forever. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit is not an it. I hear people say, it told me. The Holy Spirit is a him because he is a person. Tell about the Holy Spirit is a person. So today my subtitle is the Holy Spirit is a person. Or the Holy Spirit is a person. Holy Spirit is a person, or the Holy Spirit is a person. So in grammar, when we are describing a person, what nouns do we use? Nouns or pronouns? Pronouns, right? What pronouns do you use to describe a person? He, she, sorry. Now the Holy Spirit is a person. Now when you are describing a person, you use such kind of pronouns. So here in this scripture, we can see that the pronouns were used to describe the person who is going to come. And the Bible says, I will pray, Jesus speaking, I'll pray to the Father, or I'll pray to the Father. And he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. That helper who comes will abide with you. Ladies and gentlemen, the helper that Jesus was speaking about was not a wind, was not a storm, was not a, 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 a preacher. It was Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So as you can see, the preachers the metaphors, the emblems used in the Bible can easily be mis misinterpreted and distorted to mean that the Holy Spirit is those things. But ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit is a person and not merely a presence. I repeat, the Holy Spirit is a person and not merely a presence. So if he is a person, he is a person who has a presence. Like me, I'm a person, so I have a presence. When I'm around people, say, I say, I have a because I have a presence that I carry. When Pastor Mark shows up, you'll say, I sense like Pastor Mark is around. Because Pastor Mark has a certain presence that he carries. In the same manner, the Holy Spirit is a person with a presence. He is also a person with an atmosphere. He is also a person. He is also a person with an atmosphere and a person who emits a certain level of energy when he is around. So, the Holy Spirit is not just a wind, a fire, a dove, the Holy Spirit is a person. So the word spirit confuses people. So people think when they hear of a spirit, they think, oh, that lady has such a wonderful spirit. When someone says that lady has such a wonderful spirit, most of you will confuse and wonder, why is they saying the Holy Spirit is a spirit? Then again, we are saying a lady has a certain kind of a spirit. Now the word spirit in that sentence that I said just means an attitude. So a spirit could mean an attitude. So when you hear the Holy Spirit, I don't mean an attitude. I mean the person who carries an attitude. Because I told you the Holy Spirit is a person who has a presence. So the Holy Spirit is a spirit that carries a certain attitude. So the Holy Spirit is a person who has a presence, an atmosphere. And what else? He has a, tell your neighbor, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, a is a person who has an atmosphere. A presence is an attitude. So the Holy Spirit is not an attitude. 
the Holy Spirit is not an atmosphere. The Holy Spirit is not an environment. But the Holy Spirit is a person who has these things. Are we together? Yes. The same way you are a human being who cries, but you are not tears. Are you tears? No. But don't you cry? So the person produces tears. But the tears are not the person. So the Holy Spirit has these things in him. He has an attitude. He has an atmosphere. He has a spirit. He has a presence. But the Holy Spirit is not those things. Are we together up to there? Are we together up to there? So the Holy Spirit is neither an attitude, nor an atmosphere, nor an environment. But the Holy Spirit is a person who talks, thinks, plans, and has incredible plans towards you. He articulates plans that are good towards you. That's why God, when he was speaking, he said, and I will send you a helper that he may abide with you forever. This work, or the work of his helper is to think good for you, is to plan good for you, is to create a good environment for you, to create a good attitude for you, to create a good environment for you. That is the work of this helper. So he is the voice of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is the voice of the Godhead. Let me pause and say, who is the Godhead? The Godhead is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So the person who speaks on their behalf is called who? The Holy Spirit. He is the voice of what? The Godhead. Tell me about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the voice, is the voice of, the Godhead. of the Godhead. John 16, verse 13. John 16, verse 13. However, when he, see, 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 see the pronouns we are using. When who? He. If, we are, if we, are, we are speaking about a spirit, the spirit of truth, why should you use the pronoun he? If you are speaking about a, does a, does a spirit have a personality, it doesn't have a personality. It's an it, right? So why are we using the word he to describe the spirit of truth? Because he is a person. So when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Not it will guide you. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears. Let's see again the pronoun he. Whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. So whatever he hears, he speaks. That is why I said he is the voice of the Godhead. He is quote and quote a spokesman of the Godhead. Because our work of a spokesman is to listen to what has been said by the king or by the authority and come and make it clear to the masses that this is what the president was done. Are we together? So the Holy Spirit functions in the same way. He is the voice of the Godhead. Whatever he hears, the Father speak of you. He comes and tells you. So anything the Holy Spirit tells you is not of his own mind. It's not of his own ideas. It is what he has heard from the Father. What he has heard from the throne room. That is what he comes and gives to you. So ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit is the voice of the Godhead. This is to say, if the Holy Spirit has a voice, then he is just not just a spirit. He is not just a presence. Because a presence or an atmosphere does not talk. Have you heard the wind talk? Because the wind is like a spirit. It's like an atmosphere. Have you heard the wind talk? At hey, Moses, Moses, Moses. Why are you rushing? Have you heard that? No. The wind just has a certain sound. But does not shh. But that's, that's not talking. But the Holy Spirit here is talking. The Bible says, whatsoever he shall hear, he shall say it. That is to say, he not only hears, he hears and thinks. Because after you hear, what do you do next? You process what you've heard, so that you can be able to communicate it. In communication, you are told there are two ways of sending communication. You, you send a message that is decoded, then the, no, a coded message, then it is decoded. That's why we have a decoder. The work of a decoder is to decode the message that has been sent from the transmitting station, which is the TV station. So the TV station transmitter sends a coded message. Then you have a decoder that decodes that message and shows you pictures. That's the same thing the Holy Spirit does. So he hears from the Father. He understands what the Father is saying. He gets to know what the Father has, to, has in mind towards you. Because that is a coded language, you can't hear it with your own mind. So he becomes your decoder who decodes that voice or the cause that, that information that has been given to him by the Father and makes you understand it. So he is the voice of the Godhead. So the Holy Spirit is not just a presence. He is not an attitude. He is not an atmosphere. The Holy Spirit is a person. And for that reason, if he is a person, a person does what? Speaks. 
So the Holy Spirit is a person. So by virtue of those scriptures, we can see that the Holy Spirit is not merely an atmosphere. He is a person. And this person has a will. This person has a mind. And this person has a plan. That's what the Bible says, for the plans that I have towards you, they are good and genuine. Not to harm you, but to do you good. So ladies and gentlemen, if the Holy Spirit has a mind, the Holy Spirit has a will, and the Holy Spirit has a, 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 a plan, that is to tell you the Holy Spirit is a person. I repeat, the Holy Spirit is what? A, a person. person. And his thoughts have a presence. Have you not realized that thoughts have a presence? Yes. When you're in the house, and uh, you start traveling, you know what I mean? <laughs> you are a girl, or you are a jama, and you start traveling, you start thinking about how you can use a remis. Ah, ah. ah you're, you're, try, you're pretending you don't know what I'm saying. This, this side, you're not pretending. Okay, let me go to these guys. You start thinking, you start looking at that Nivea. And you start traveling. And start shining. You start thinking, how can that lotion go to the zoo and meet a monkey? Look at pretenders. And I know you do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Now, how, do you, how did you leave your house to the zoo? You left your house to the zoo through your mind. So when you started to think, a certain atmosphere and a certain presence came into your house. And that atmosphere is the atmosphere of, I have to go to the zoo to visit my monkey. So all of a sudden, the atmosphere around you became a clouded atmosphere. That if I don't do this, this will happen to me. That is to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, thoughts have a presence. That's why God says, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Because if your mind can be transformed, you will have certain thoughts. And if you have certain thoughts, you will carry a certain presence. So the reason why you don't have a certain presence is because you have certain thoughts. When you feel suicidal, when you start thinking suicidal, you start thinking, oh, people don't like me. I think I should just die. You see me, my life is like this, my life is like that. Ladies and gentlemen, immediately you start processing those thoughts. The presence around you becomes a suicidal presence. You start thinking of how you will kill yourself, of how you will destroy your life, how you will do blah, 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 how I am depressed, because you started thinking about it. So you processed it and became like it. That is to tell you, if my if thoughts have a presence, then the Holy Spirit, he has a mind. And if he has a mind, he has a thought. So if he has a thought, he has a certain presence. Are we together? So the Holy Spirit is much more than a presence. He is a person because he thinks. And when he thinks, with you now in mind, he's thinking through your mind. He creates that presence. That's why people say, hey, I feel like the Holy Spirit is here. It's because he has entered into your mind. And he's thinking through your mind. So you start having a presence around you that you sense is who? The Holy Spirit. Are we together? So the Holy Spirit is a person who has a presence. However, the Holy Spirit is more than just a presence. In the same way, an, the aroma of food is not food. But it's an indicator that there is food. Do you know an aroma? What do you call aroma? Arufu ya chakula. Ukisikia arufu ya chakula, inamanisha hii arufu ni chakula. Talk to me. No, come on, talk to me. Inamanisha hii ni chakula. But is it an indication that there is food? The same way. The presence of the Holy Spirit is an indication that he is around. So the evidence of the presence is the evidence of the person. Are we together? So few people understand this idea. So few people understand who the Holy Spirit is. And if you don't know the Holy Spirit is a person who has a mind, then you will never discuss with him your problems. You will never discuss with him your ideas because you don't think he's a, he has a mind. So when you sit down with the Holy Spirit, you just wish things to him. Not knowing you can discuss issues with the Holy Spirit. You can kneel down and tell him the Holy Spirit. I like visiting the zoo and I like causing my, 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 my monkey some problems. And I've tried to come out by myself, but I've not been able. But Lord, you've been helping me, and you can help me. So please, help me. When you speak like that to the Holy Spirit, you make him understand that you value his presence. 
because he is in your life and he is a person who you can reason with. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. So who is the Holy Spirit? Number one. Number one. Okay, before I tell you who the Holy Spirit is, let me make this clear. Jesus recognized the Holy Spirit as a master. He said, he shall, the scripture that I read for you in John, John, John 14, 26. He said, he shall teach you all things. Meaning the Holy Spirit is a master teacher. So he's not merely a, a fog. He's not a wind. He's not a fire. He's not rain. He's not merely a white dove that comes during baptism. He is a person. He's not a wind. If he were a wind, he will not be able to mentor people. If he were a fire, he will not be able to mentor people. If he was a white bird, he will not be able to teach you the things that Jesus said he will teach you all things. So the Holy Spirit is more than that. However, the Holy Spirit operates in such ways. So let me show you the ways by which the Holy Spirit can enter your life or operate in your life. So that when you see them, you know the person of the Holy Spirit is around you. So these are one of the ways to know the Holy Spirit is around you. Are we together? Yes. Number one, the Holy Spirit can enter your life like water into bracket to refresh you. Isaiah 44 verse 3. Can you read the Bible together? For I will pour out water to quench your thirst and to irrigate your parched fields. And I will pour out my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your children. Now this is metaphoric. I will pour out water to quench your thirst and to irrigate your parched lands. Full stop. And, and means continuation. I will pour out my spirit on your descendants. So how will the Holy Spirit come? Like the water that is being poured to the parched land. Verse 4. They will thrive like watered grass, like willows on a river bank. Because the Holy Spirit can enter your life like water. So when the Holy Spirit enters your life, give me a new translation now. Which other translation? Amplified translation for this. Amplified for us. They shall spring up among grass like willows or pollers by the water course. So when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, he comes like water. And one of the things that waters do, waters make things grow. Waters refresh things. So when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, he comes into your life to grow you. You become like a tree that has been planted by the waters. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. For he leads me beside still waters. I'll be like a tree that is planted by the rivers, that bears fruit in season and out of season. Why do I bear fruit in season and out of season? I bear fruit in season and out of season. Because the Holy Spirit is in my life like water to refresh me and cause me to grow. So when I'm weary, when I'm thirsty, the same way when I feel thirsty, I go and drink water. When I feel weary and thirsty, who should I go to? The Holy Spirit. Because when he enters my life, he enters my life like water. So he is a person who brings water into my soul. He's more like the water boy of your soul. His work is to quench the thirst of your soul. So the Holy Spirit is a person who can enter your life like water. The Holy Spirit can enter your life like water. Number two, the Holy Spirit can enter your life like fire to purify you, to bracket, purify you. Number one, I said into bracket, refresh you. Fire, purify you, into bracket. So the Holy Spirit can enter into your life like fire to purify you. Acts chapter 2. From verse 3. Let's go to verse 3. 1, 2, 3. Can you read it together? Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. Verse 4. Then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them that. Now this is the day of Pentecost. What happened during the day of Pentecost? The Holy Spirit came and entered into the lives of the disciples as fire. The reason why he came and manifested himself like fire is because he had come to do purification. So the work of the Holy Spirit when he comes into your life as fire is to purify you. To purify you of your sin. To purify you of your habits. To purify you of your wicked desires. To purify you of the things that you know are not good. And the only way they can be purified is through fire. That's why the Bible says the word of God is like fire. What is the work of fire? Is to purify. Gold has to go through fire to become gold. Silver has to go through fire to become silver. 
So fire is a purifier. So the Holy Spirit, he can enter into your life. He is a person. But when he enters into your life, he enters into your life, number one, as water to refresh you. Number two, as fire to purify you. Number three, the Holy Spirit can move suddenly and quickly into your life like wind. The Holy Spirit can move suddenly and quickly in your life like wind. So when he moves in quickly and suddenly, he's coming in like wind. The work of wind is to do what? To calm down. So the Holy Spirit can come into your life to calm you down. When he moves in like wind, is to calm you down. Have you ever been by the breeze of an ocean? Have you felt the breeze of an ocean? Okay, one day I see you traveling to Mombasa. Amen. And I see you by the, by the, by the beach. Amen. You don't believe it, eh? So the Holy Spirit is a person who can come into your life like the wind. Acts chapter 2 verse 2. Acts chapter 2 verse 2. Let's start from verse 1 actually. Let's start from verse 1. Quickly. Can we read together? When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Of Pentecost had fully come. They were all I can't hear you. They were all in one accord. Then verse 2. From heaven. As uh -huh. and suddenly from heaven a sound came as of a mighty rushing wind and filled the whole house where they were sitting. So the Holy Spirit came in suddenly and filled the whole place. May the Holy Spirit come in suddenly into your life. May the Holy Spirit come suddenly into your life. May the Holy Spirit come suddenly into your life. I'm saying may the Holy Spirit come suddenly into your life. Into your education. Into your career. Into your calling. Into your church. Let there be a sudden moment in your life. May he come in suddenly. You know when he comes in suddenly, he does not just come in as an ordinary person. He comes in unannounced. And when the Holy Spirit comes in unannounced, he comes in to change things unannounced. I see God changing your life unannounced. Your enemies will be caught off guard. Your enemies will be caught off guard. I'm saying your enemies shall be caught off guard. I'm saying your enemies will be caught off guard. Your haters will not know that you are changing. Those who thought you are not, you're going to fail will be surprised because the Holy Spirit will come in suddenly. Those who thought that you will be a person who is struggling, they will, they will be shocked because the Holy Spirit is going to come in suddenly. He came in suddenly into their life like the rushing.